This is George Dion with Metal Express Radio, and I'm here with Alex Grassi of Hookers and Blow. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Awesome. If I knew absolutely nothing about Hookers and Blow, how would you describe the band's music to me? We're just a cover band, you know. I mean, you know, it's a party. It's a party band. It's fun. It's just, you know, me and Dizzy from Guns N' Roses and a, bun- and a rotating cast of players who were lucky to have permanently John Kelly from Typo Negative and uh, Mike Duda from Wasp and on bass and drums. And it's a uh, the fun, good, good night out. It's just, you know, the band is called Hookers and Blow. Do I need to say anything else? <laughs> It might have to be more politically correct these days. It might have to be uh, sex oh, workers. Yeah, we've, and been, we've, we've, been, we've, been, we've got a couple slap on the wrist, but you know what? That's, that's, I'd, I'd rather piss off a few people and make a, a lot more fans than, you know, <laughs> bow down to the cancel culture thing. I really don't care. Absolutely. Uh, you yeah. formed the band with Dizzy in 2003, as you say, as an excuse to get free drinks in Hollywood. Yeah. Kind of going backwards, right? You guys had your original bands, and you probably started off in cover bands, and this is just a, a cover well, band with... Most musicians, when they're all, back when there was a scene in Hollywood, when I first moved there, there was a place called the Cat Club, next door to the Whiskey, and whenever bands would be off, guys would get the itch to go out and jam, and it would always be like Thursday night was one you know jam night, Sunday night was another, and Dizzy was always there, and I would I'd run into him, and we get it off, we played together, and I said, you know, I could book this thing out of town for real money. And he goes, let's call it Hookers and Blow, though. I go, done. <laughs> and I, bo- I booked our first tour, I believe it was spring of 20, 2003, and we played Boston, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, and it was great, it was packed, you know, right off the bat. Yeah, absolutely. Because no, they, they hadn't been anything like that before, you know. There's your typical cover band that play all the safe Nickelback stuff. And then <laughs> you know, there's your all-star band that are a bunch of guys just picking up a paycheck. Then there's a special thing called Hookers and Blow. It's like, what is this? It's like, well, we don't even know, so we're going to figure it out in the same room with you. And we did. I mean, there were nights where we wrote songs on stage. And you know? here you are in 2021 putting out your first album of covers oddly enough yeah. it came out july 23rd on uh, golden robot records uh yeah golden robot's been great to us yep you've been putting out singles for a little while why'd you decide on the full album well we we, we originally intended to do the full album lot earlier but when the pandemic hit a lot of the uh, plants that you know, distribute cds and vinyl went down they closed up so we had to wait so we just to keep our name and to keep to keep people placated and uh, interested in the band, we just kept put throwing singles out there. And then finally, we had the whole the whole record done. You know, but we also had to halt recording because we couldn't. The studio we were working at shut down, so we had to finish the album virtually, which actually ended up being for the better because we could really take time to get our parts perfectly. You know, right. I couldn't tell from listening uh, through streaming, but are you the singer on all the tracks no, except I'm for the, the Beastie Boys? The, I'm the lead guitar player. Dizzy's the lead singer and piano player. Okay, I got you. There was one song where it referred to Mr. Grassi, and I'm like, Oh, that's the Eddie Money track, right? <laughs> I, I do my spoken word. Because I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not a singer. I couldn't. I mean, it, that, it, that Eddie Money vocal was supposed to be my part, and I tried to do it in the studio, and it just sucked. So I said, let me think of something clever here. So it's like, instead of me, you know, talking to, you know, singing, why don't I talk to a judge about getting busted with a prostitute? Which is what I did, you know. <laughs> if you listen closely, you'll see. And I, and I did both voices. I did the judge and myself. So. For the most part, you more stuck more with uh, classic 70s tunes, but you got the uh, the Body Count song in there. That was an interesting choice. Yeah, and we got I See the Approval on it. You heard it the other day. I loved it. Awesome. Are there are there any of these tracks where you tried to get uh, somebody from that particular band to participate? You know, we thought about it, but it's like, yeah, but that kind of, I, I mean, you know, I mean, Eddie Money was sick. We would have loved to have him. He knew about it. He was a fan of the band, actually. Um, or he was just a fan of Hookers and Blow. Either way, he loved, he loved the <laughs> idea. You know, every time I talk to Hookers and Blow, I don't even know what he was talking about. He loved yelling yell, yell that at me. Um, but you know, no, we never because it just just logistically with the pandemic, we did we just wanted to keep it, just get it done. Um, but I mean, I can't think of you know anyone we. I mean, it just becomes a thing when you when you start doing that because then it's, everyone wants to be a featured member of this and that. It's like we're just doing it ourselves, you know. Absolutely. 
Plus, it's not like our label has, you know, it's not like we spent a million dollars making the same. I mean, Disney and I definitely spent way over budget for the label, but we wanted to make it good. You know, I'd rather go, go out of pocket and go with the red and put out something great than just pick up a paycheck, pay my rent twice twice, and then have a piece of shit album about the rest of my life, you know? Exactly. A uh, couple of the Led Zeppelin tracks you were able to feature uh, Frankie Benali. Or- yes, yes. He, he pre-requested that. He, he actually scheduled his chemo treatments um, about six months into his diagnosis to do those tracks. And he did them all in one day and all one and a half takes. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah, the now, You would never know he was 130 pounds and had a feeding tube in him when he recorded that. Are you planning on taking hookers and blow on the road as soon as you can? Uh, we always tour, you know, here and there. Whenever Guns and Roses has downtime, and whenever Quiet Riot does, you know, that's always been the mantra. But uh, maybe we'll do some shows at the end of the year. Uh, but GNR has got a pretty busy summer, as does Quiet Riot. So when the schedules and the stars line up, for sure, yeah, we will. Uh, you worked with Dizzy Reed before on his his studio album Rock and Roll Ain't Easy, which yep. is a fantastic album. Yeah, that that album was really that was the first time Frankie played drums since when Kevin passed away too on that record. Oh no um, kidding. That was two thousand eight, yeah. It was a weird time because Kevin had passed away suddenly and we were all kind of scrambling to figure out what to do with this. It's like I'm making a solo record and he was at the time kind of crashing on my couch and couch, couch surfing or whatever and we, were, we, we was working on songs on acoustic guitar and next thing you know we're in the studio making this thing and that's, that was 08 and it, 10 years later in typical Guns N' Roses fashion it came out <laughs> you know it, are you guys planning on working on a sequel to that album it's already pretty much done awesome yeah yeah, he's got he's got his whole. I mean, I, we keep we keep hookers and blow and Disney solo records completely separate. I mean, I'm sort of the face of the spokesperson for H and B and Disney's Disney. You know, I mean, and that's the way we we always wanted to do it because Disney's got a legitimate solo with a serious solo career to, to think about. And hookers and blow is just a fun night out. You know, it's a it's a whole different thing. So we kind of want to keep the two separate. So with Hookers and Blow when versus when it came out to kind of today, maybe not so much pandemic today, but is that lifestyle still a thing out on the road? It seems like there'd be no, too much. No, 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 no. I mean, you can't be 15 years old <laughs> doing that shit, obviously. I mean, you know. No, I mean it's, it's it's fun to talk about the old days and you know, but 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 for the most part it's 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 a thing of the past, you know. It's just, you, you, you can't, people think it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll out there, but I mean, it's 4 a.m. lobby calls and, you know, three layovers. I mean, it's, it's tough to tour these days, you know? So you can't be all, you can't be all messed up. You know, you got to be on point. Well, and, you know, with the advent of cell phones and the internet and everything, even that kind of lifestyle, I'd be more afraid of, you know, the news getting out. Oh, I don't care if you think <laughs> of anyone I can do. I mean, obviously, but... Yeah, you know, but then it's like, oh, rock guy and band does drugs. Ooh, what do you say? That's news. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's 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 amazing. The president's son can smoke crack at a strip club two blocks away from the White House, and it's you know, no, no big deal. So I think when, if a guy in a cover band goes because the blow does it, I don't see it being fucking from CNN's news. You know, it's no big deal. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. There's a, there's a heavy metal guy out there that's in trouble for doing a sex thing, and he lost his job. So, well, I mean. that's a whole different thing. That's just I mean, there's a difference between sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and there's, and there's that. That's just no excuse for doing that. You know? I mean, I mean, look, if, if, if I'm in a room and there's something going on and it could jeopardize some, you know, the organization's reputation, and I see someone pull their cell phone out, they're kicked off the bus or their phone gets put away. <laughs> exactly. Now, if I'm doing it myself on my cell phone, I have no one but to blame but myself, okay? <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean come on, you can't compare someone sneaking a photo of someone doing a line of coke to what we're the elbow or not what we're talking about you know <laughs> you got a point <laughs> yeah there's a little bit a little bit of a difference you know all right you're and, and, and there's so much fake stuff out there on the internet too i mean i've read things about us that are so untrue and then i then there's things that are like dude if you only knew what we really did that night you know so and again what happens on the road stays on the road you know that's the mystique yeah. of rock and roll i think yeah well there's a code if you break that you know the code you don't you don't you know yeah, there's a code, and you just, it's kind of like joining the mob, you know? I mean, I remember when I signed my first Quiet Riot contract, was, and I like, was oh, oh, 03 or oh, 04, Kevin Dubrow said, well, congratulations, you're now part of the mullet mafia. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know? So, like other rockers, you are on Cameo. You do little video greetings for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you gotten any, like, crazy requests that you're like, nah, I'm not going to do that? No, 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 not yet. I've gotten a few weird ones, but, you know, it's... Not, you know, it's 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 easy money and it's fun and it's it's. I mean, I know that my friend had a Charlie Sheen cameo made for our record coming out. We 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 got the file and Charlie loved it and it came out great. This was kind of before cameo was kind of when they were testing it out. Yeah, and um, it's it's hilarious. I mean, it's great. You can have a lot of fun with it. You know, it's great. <laughs> You, know. you had a um, you had a project on Golden Robot prior to this called um, the New Strange. You released a couple yes. singles on that. What's what's the status yeah, of that? Yeah, I did a cover of, of Into the Night by Benny Mardonis and then released that with with a B side original song. And um, you know that was just a one time thing. You know the main focus was Hookers and Blow because we kind of signed this deal simultaneously. Uh, <laughs> so you got to work that Benny Mardonis song into the Hookers and Blow set because it was actually pretty good. It's, I think it came out great, but I want to leave it as is because Benny's no longer with us, and I'm glad that he got to hear the final version and approve of it and help produce it. Um, but nah, it's not really in there, you know, because it's more of a, of a yacht rock type song. And, you know, I got to tell you, that's a hard vocal to sing, so. I bet. Probably not going to put that one in the Hookers and Blow set. <laughs> it's just not, not in what we do. Do you have anything going on with Quiet Riot? We have a lot going on with Quiet Ray. Yeah, we're touring constantly. I'm packing for a show right now. We did two shows last weekend. Um, new record coming out that we're in the studio doing right now. And um, yeah, shows the show must go on, and it is. Well, it sounds like you got your hands full. You got your hookers and blow. You got your quiet riot. Uh, you got, uh, I'm sure you got yeah. little side projects like everyone else. Uh, no, you know, no, you know, my side project is just working, you know, mainly quiet riot is my main focus. And I mean, yeah. I, just to give you an example of how immersed in quiet riot I am, I forgot our album was coming out this week with hookers and blow. <laughs> I had to be reminded by my our PR person. I had all these interviews today. I'm like, oh yeah, our record came out. Oh yeah, that's how busy we've been. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, not at all. So let's talk a, just briefly about Quiet Riot. Is there an album that you think should have got a, a second look that w- didn't fairly get out there enough that you think in your time with Quiet Riot that people should take another listen to? Uh, I think the Rehab album is a good example of that because that was Kevin and Frankie's, well, it, was, it ended up being Kevin Swan song, and, he, and he was, that was his favorite record. He got to sing with Glenn Hughes. Um, it kind of introduced me into the band because I wrote a couple songs on it. And um, it's just it's just a good they, they were I know Kevin and Frank are both very happy and proud of that record so I would say rehab for sure. Not an easy record to get a hold of. <sighs> no, no, it's you know it's it will be at some point I'm sure, but you know this it's you know with, with all these new platforms coming out pre that were that predate or, you know that the, that the record deals for a lot of these albums predate it's tough you know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, think about it. if you sign a record deal in 2005 before Spotify exists, how do you account for Spotify and the record deal when it was, wasn't even in existence? So you need to think about these things, you know? Yeah, that's what I think. Which that's a lot what, of people don't, and they just sit there and complain on the internet about, but, you know, there's a lot more to it than, yeah, just put it out. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Why can't they make a Jaws with, with, with Quinn? Because Quinn's dead. Get it? <laughs> the shark ate him. It's not coming back. All right, get, get get over it. I mean, I was really bummed when Quint died, but I didn't sit on the internet and talk about it. You know, I went to go see Jaws too, and I had a great time. Well, at least you didn't give any spoilers about what happened to Quint. No, exactly. <laughs> the new album, it's self-titled "Hookers and Blow." It's a bunch of great covers. Uh, I want to thank you, Alex, for taking the time to speak with Metal Express Radio. Oh, no, thanks for having me. Anytime, man. You know where to find me. <laughs>